Good morning and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. We gather to reject malice and discontent, instead rejoicing in the gospel of reconciliation. All our Mass intentions in Beta, Pro Infamorum, and Animas are scrolling live streamed and printed and posted within the main church. Additionally, they are in the sacristy for the archbishop and priest to pray for at each Mass and are also placed on the altar during celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Breaking Bread 2021 missiles are now available at the Cathedral Basilica gift shop. You can purchase your personal copy. Please contact the gift shop at 479-MARY-6279 for more information. For the safety of all, as per protocols by the Department of Public Health and Social Services, please exit through the east and west wings of the church while practicing social distancing. Our collection will resume as usual during the preparation of the gifts at the offertory. Sijus Maasi. The presider for our Eucharistic celebration is Archbishop Michael J. Burns, assisting Deacon Steve Martinez. Please stand and let us pray the healing victims of abuse. Holy Spirit, comfort of heart, heal your people's wounds and transform brokenness into wholeness. Grant us the courage and wisdom, humility and grace to act with justice. Breathe wisdom into our prayers and labors. Grant that all harmed by abuse may find peace and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Our gathering hymn, Gifin and Samoro, Catolico. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As today we join Jesus in the desert, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray.
Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. All the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in Jesus' 40 days, he follows what the Old Testament finds, a kind of fascination of the desert. Most translations of it is actually calling it the wilderness. But those 40 years made a significant mark on the future. So first of all, the wilderness is celebrated in the Psalms and the prophets. And they're going to guide us here today. In Psalm 95, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test, and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. So the wilderness is a place of testing, of God testing his people and his people testing God. In the wilderness, man ate the bread of angels. That was the manna. He sent them food in abundance. And yet they did not believe and asked for quail meat, and God provided, even though he was angry that they didn't trust him. It was a struggle of faith, and even though they were recalcitrant, God provided by the manna and by the quail. But the wilderness was also a place of new beginnings. In Isaiah 43, speaking about the recovery from exile in Babylon, which was as devastating as those 40 years in the wilderness. The prophet says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The new beginnings, the new faith for them was exiting the exile, returning to Babylon, or returning from Babylon back to Judah, to the place where God lived. But they had to go through the wilderness to get there. But more importantly, the desert is a place of intimacy with God. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her, that is Israel, into the wilderness. And on that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. And I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. And I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. And you shall know the Lord. 
The wilderness was a place where God could speak freely to his children. And even though, in this case, this is Hosea, even though Israel rejected God, played the prostitute with other gods, God didn't give up on them. He wooed Israel back, even though she had sinned terribly. But God kept going back and loving her, loving Israel, even be in the midst of her idolatry. God would not give up his people. One of the beautiful things about marriage is it becomes a mutual dependence. The husband with the wife and the wife with the husband. That's the relationship that God wants with you and me. That he depends on us to carry out the mission that each one of us, the vocation each one of us has. But we must depend on him. And we can. Think of just last year's Lent. Felt like all of last year was Lent. When we endured our own wilderness. You know, when the Mass became a virtual event and not a live event. But we didn't have the bread of angels available to all who wished to receive. And that was a very small portion of the people. But do you also remember that May consecration of Mary? When the image of Santa Maria Camelin went through every single village on the island. I don't know about you, but I was thoroughly moved by that experience. Seeing people pouring out of their houses, waving their handkerchiefs in honor of the Blessed Mother and her son. And the intimacy that we had, because we were all, you know, we weren't socially distancing at that point, which was kind of fun. But it was a time of great consolation for us. Well, we seem in these days to mostly have recovered from the various restrictions of last year. But at the same time, let's not forget the hunger we had for that intimacy with God in the image of Blessed Mother. Because today we can receive the bread of angels. May God bless us. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God born the Father of the world ages, God from God, the light from light, true God from true God, begotten God from me, consubstantial with God, for whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the punches of life. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is his Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
To the Lord of compassion and mercy, let us offer our prayers. That these days of Lent may be a desert experience for each of us to rediscover the ways of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern nations and human destinies may be committed to the justice and mercy of God, working unceasingly for the alleviation of hunger and misery in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our compassionate Father in heaven will watch over those who have been displaced from their homes by disaster, persecution, or financial hardship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Father Gus Gumatautau, Miguel Sablan Cadehe, Helena Aflagui Chrysostomo, Nicasio M. Welgus, and all our faithful departed may experience the eternal life of the victorious Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you never abandon those who need you. Help us to recognize your love in our daily lives and follow your holy path in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation and preparation of the gifts, Cantanga Fina Tomorrow, Asaina Hesa Christu. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all of His holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by turning, overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last with the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with your most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grants us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Act of spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to re receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you as if you were already there. Keep me close to you each day. Amen. Our first communion hymn, Cantin Griffin of Tomorrow, Sang and Nanti.
Let us pray. Parish announcements. During these 40 days of Lent, we invite you to prepare spiritually through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Weekday Masses during Lent will be at 12.10 p.m. Confessions are available 30 minutes before Mass. On weekdays only, Lenten sacrificial donation boxes will be available at the church entrance and east and west wings for almsgiving. Alms may also be given online through our website with a notation, Lenten Sacrificial donation. A report on almsgiving will be provided after the Lenten season, along with the recipient of your sacrificial offering, Sijus Maasi. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our sending forth him, come thank you for tomorrow. The Muzi Manhengi.
Ave Maria Purissima. Ave Maria, Bula Gracia.